In this video, guys, we're gonna look at how to trade momentum during choppy times. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, question from a subscriber. Really appreciate this. Thank you for writing in. It was a great uh, email, some questions in there. I've got to do some videos to answer these questions. So much appreciated. And by the way, if you've got questions, fire them in, email them in, put in the comment section below. I get to most of them, not all of them, I get to most of them. Right, this is a great question. How to trade momentum during choppy time. So the question was slightly different, but I've kind of adapted this a little bit. So hopefully it answers the question um, for, the, for, for the gentleman who, who wrote in and hopefully it helps some others as well. So the question is, how do I trade momentum during these choppy times? It's choppy, I'm trying to trade momentum. Sometimes I'm getting caught out by uh, moves going against me. I find it challenging. I mean, the first thing that I can say really for trading momentum during choppy times is that if you can, stay away from it because momentum, I know this sounds like a really simple answer to it, doesn't it? And we'll go to some more stuff in a second, but momentum really, the idea of momentum is that you've got everything lining up for you. If you're chasing something, which by the nature of momentum generally you are, I mean, we're not talking about chasing really high, but you're following some momentum in one direction and you're trading in the continued direction of that movement, you are really want to be in market conditions that aren't mean reverting, that aren't choppy. And choppy markets are generally gonna be mean reverting, but in a bad way. So I define choppy markets as I kind of call this dirty candlesticks. So, you know, you get one green, you get one red, one green, one green, one green, one red, you know, one green, one red, you, you get the point. There's no real pattern to it. It's not like mean reversion where you might get a nice move, a good clean swing in one direction that's tradable. It's a decent number of pips, a number of ticks, whatever it may be, reverses, comes back, all that kind of stuff. You get, uh, just grubby movements. And the reason I say this, guys, is because this is my nemesis, right? Chop is my nemesis. I can't tell you probably the amount of money that I've lost throughout the years trying to be extra clever in chop. And now I'm just putting my hands up and go, you know what? If it's choppy, just don't trade it. I know where my edge is. My edge is on momentum trades or mean reversion trades under certain conditions. I just try and avoid it. But you know what? If you want to get good at it, I get why you want to do, want to become good at this because... If you can be, then there's an extra layer of uh, extra opportunity there. And there are some guys out there who trade well in shop. You know, they just seem to kind of have a feel for it. It's not my thing, but here's some kind of things that I would guide you towards if you wanted to get down this route. So question being, how do I trade momentum during choppy times? The, the number one thing with this is to not overstay your welcome. So if you're trading momentum, let's say you're trading that kind of little spurt of momentum, you need to put it into context of what's happened. I'm assuming this is on a day trading perspective, you're trading on a maybe a three minute, one minute, five minute chart kind of thing. You need to look at it and say, well, how much, what are the swings? And I've kind of done a video on this before. This is a really good concept, is what are the swings from high to low that we've had before, from low to high, high to low, to, to frame the trade. So if they're like 20 tick swings, 20 pip swings, 15 pips, if it's moved 10 pips already, there's no juice in it. If it's moved seven pips already, you might have a little bit left in it. So the idea is to not force what you want out of it, but just to put it into the context of what's happened. So if the chop is like I say, 15 pips, then be aware that if you're buying it and it's already moved a decent amount, you can't overstay your welcome. Now, if you're scalping and you're hyper aggressive and you're grabbing pips uh, here and there, then by all means, but again, not overstaying your welcome. If it's moving and there's momentum, grab what you of high expectancy trade and pull it out again. Uh, and if you're doing that, I've kind of changed, this will be a little bit different in a second, but if you're doing that, you need to be very aggressive with your risk management so if it's not going away, especially if you're look, literally looking to scalp a few pips out of it, you need to be very aggressive with your risk management, it's working or it's not, um, and, and trading it that way. So number two is being very selective. Um, I kind of alluded to this in the beginning and I couldn't help by putting this in because, you know, the, I mean, I don't know what you're trading or the market you're trading or this could be different for different people, but I know for me, I would get very emotionally attached to the trade and I would it would trigger my negative emotions if I try to over trade this. But if you're cool with that and you've got that under control, then being selective about what you're looking for. So 
We can get caught up in believing that this is momentum when it's not. So have a very strict criteria and say, yes, when this happens, when this happens, I'll pull the trigger and waiting for that. Because by the nature of trading a little bit choppy markets is that you end up getting caught in stuff and three or four trades that weren't really the high quality ones you wanted. And in reality, when you're trading in chopping markets, you're probably gonna get a lot of signals anyway. So if you can reduce those down, and just trade a couple of them, um, you know, a two out of the, the five you get, for example, you're gonna do better out of it. Okay, number three, consider counter trend. Now this wasn't part of the uh, video, but I just wanted to put this out there that if trading momentum during chop is challenging, Perhaps consider if you want to trade chop and you must trade chop and you think that there's an opportunity trading choppy markets is to consider trading a mean reversion stretch. So if it's choppy and it chops its way up and it's kind of falls, then consider trading you know, a mean reversion type strategy as opposed to a momentum based strategy. That may not be the right thing for you. You might want to say, well, I want to stick with momentum. I just want to be very clear on what I'm trading, which is fine. You know, the clarity in the plan is perfect, is the, is the way to go. But you might say, okay, well, let me just see, have I got a good feel for when maybe we stretched a bit? Especially if you're scalping, you think it might, might stretch a little bit, pings back, grab a bit, move on, pings back, grab a bit, that kind of stuff. So consider that. If it doesn't work, you then just go back and, into the drawing board, but it's something to look at. Number four, widen stops. Now, I don't contradict myself slightly because in the beginning of the video, I said keep the stops tight. Now, what I mean by this is if you're trading momentum and you're looking for a little bit wider target. So if you're looking for a scalp, then keep those stops tight because you don't want to be letting it run really against you because you've just got a negative expectancy and negative risk reward and you just end up doing loads of damage. But if you're trading momentum and let's say you're looking for a little bit longer term momentum, so rather than like each individual candle, you're looking over sort of five or six candles, whatever that may be, you might have to be a little bit wider with your stops and go for a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Um, because you might get a little bit of movement in your way, comes back a little bit, moves your way, comes back a little bit, and you're looking for literally, that's my risk, that's my reward, it's fixed, I'm taking the trade, I think it's. I think I've got an edge in terms of I've identified some upward momentum here, so I'm just gonna use one-to-one. -one. And so widening those stops a little bit more than perhaps you would rather than looking for the two-to-one, three-to-one, might give you a better play in really choppy stuff, because choppy stuff is, it's tricky, it's challenging, isn't it? It starts to go your way, comes back a little bit, goes your way, comes back a little bit, doesn't quite get to where you want. You know, a couple of ticks away, comes back, and you kind of have to have a really test of patience. Um, so that's something to consider as well. And the final thing, guys, is look at higher time frames. Um, if you're trading these choppy, challenging markets, looking at the bigger time frames to put it into context and aligning yourself with that trend. I talked about this before, and it's a real simple concept, but ultimately, it will save you a load of cash, honestly. You know, if you're looking at the bigger picture and you're saying, okay, listen, we're uptrending here, then just look for longs only in the chop. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to look for big moves, not, not suggesting that. I'm saying that you only look on the long side because you've got the weight behind you. You can afford to be wrong and you've got the bigger weight because ultimately at some point, if that trend continues, this chop will have a slight upward drift and it's challenging enough trying to scalp in that chop than trying to take those shorts against the longer term, higher time frame trend. So that something would be my number one thing of filtering and saying, hey, if I'm trading shop, I am only trading in one direction based on the higher time frame trend. Now, let me just add this little caveat, guys. That may not, not be the daily. If you're trading on such a short time frame, you might be trading the weekly trend, which might be down. If you're trading, uh, you know, depending on the time frame, there's no point in if we're coming back, we've been, we've been moving down for kind of four or five days in a row and the uh, trend has been up for the past three years, there's no point in saying, well, I'm aligned with the bigger trend because you really want to be aligned with the trend that's the next trend, if that makes sense, from this time frame. So if that's a one minute, you might want to go to, what's my 15 minute? If it's a five month, it goes to my hourly, that kind of thing, rather than going, hey, I'm trading on a monthly trend, it doesn't quite, you know, match up. So not overstaying your welcome, being very selective, uh, considering counter trend winding stops and look at the higher time frames. Trading momentum during choppy times. Appreciate the email, thank you very much. And by the way, guys, if you're a subscriber, it's much appreciated. If you're not, maybe you consider doing so for more videos from me about this, loads of other topics, and we're all here to become better traders. Take care, whatever you're doing, whatever strategy you're trading. Bye-bye, guys.